Well, hello everybody. I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison and welcome to this week's segment of Why. This is where we take just a few minutes to answer some of the most common health-related questions that I see in my office every day. The question today is, Dr. Harrison, um, why is my brain not working? I don't feel like myself. I can't think. I got brain fog, fatigue. I can't concentrate. These are, that's a big question, and that is all about brain inflammation. I've talked about foggy brain and things like that, but I'm gonna jump into it deeper in this video. This is so important. Brain inflammation is so important for the simple reason that, that all of our brains are degenerating. At least if you're in your mid-20s, our brains are already degenerating. And inflammation is a major cause of this. The more in, neuroinflammation, brain inflammation we have, the more degeneration we get. So we are all in neuroinflamed a little bit. We all have some brain, brain inflammation and we are all degenerating. Hate to say it, but that's what we are doing. So what we really gotta do is reduce that brain inflammation so we can pr slow down the brain degeneration, okay? So this is extremely important. And if we have these aggressive symptoms that I mentioned at the start, fog and, and brain fog, fatigue, inability to concentrate, those are warning lights. That's your car's engine light blinking. It's coming on, and if you're ignoring it, if you did that with your car, you could probably only do that so long till your engine blows up or something like that happens. So those warning signs are extremely important and shouldn't be ignored, so we're gonna address that today. So that is why it's important, because we have to preserve brain function. Okay, so it is a massive topic, um, but again, the goal is to reduce the neuroinflammation. Keep it at a minimum. We're always gonna have some, but we gotta keep it as low as possible. Some symptoms of brain inflammation, which we talked about, is that brain fog, that, that uh, lack of clarity. I get people telling me it feels like they have tunnel vision, where they really can't interact with their world that much. It affects their balance. Another thing of brain inflammation, if there's enough of it, digestive problems. Yes, digestive problems. The gut can't work if the brain's not working. The brain determines how the gut works and the gut determines how the brain works. So a lot of people have a lot of neuroinflammation due to gut health. So digestive problems, including acid reflux disorder, is a gut problem. That's gotta be corrected. Um, lack of stamina, endurance, mental endurance. Here's an example, I get this all the time in my office. Dr. Harrison, I used to be able to read a long time for, for quite, a, quite a while and I wouldn't get tired. Now I just start reading and I fall asleep. I wanna fall asleep. And it, this never used to be. Walking into rooms and forgetting things. But the stamina of inability to read for long durations like they used to, or drive like they used to, and now they get tired, that's a lack of stamina, endurance. That usually means your brain uh, has lost its endurance due to neural inflammation. So there's a lot of symptoms. Um, Brain fog, fatigue are really common, uh, lack of concentration, in, walking into rooms, forgetting why. Um, when neuroinflammation gets bad enough, you'll, you'll see depression, you'll see uh, anxiety. These are close, closely connected with significant neuroinflammation. So those are some of the symptoms. Um, and, and early stage dementia and Alzheimer's, those are due to long-term neuroinflammation, creating enough degeneration, okay, premature degeneration. So th there's so many causes to this neuroinflammation. There's lots, so I'll, I'll throw a few out. One is sugar consumption. If you consume a lot of sugars and you are a pre-diabetic or a diabetic, your risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's goes up by, the last statistic I saw was three to 400%. So you gotta correct that. Anemia, I talked in a video before about anemia. Anemia is a big player in early stage uh, brain degeneration and a contributor to neuroinflammation because anemia prevents the body from having and the brain from having oxygen. You need that oxygen to keep the brain functioning or you'll get neuron cell death. Um, toxins, metals, chemicals, plastics, aluminum. Aluminum has a really, really high rate of, uh, of causing Alzheimer's from what we've learned. But there's more than just aluminum. All of these metals and mercuries, they're all neurotoxins. So we gotta watch our exposure. In fact, I have a colleague who ha has, a, has a client that's, that's around a lot of these metals and, um, and there's significant brain problems early, you know, and this individual is quite young. Um, sleep deprivation, that is massive. 
massive. And if it goes on long enough, you get more, neuro, more neuro inflammation, and it can be permanent. We've got to be careful with sleep deprivation. We sleep 20% less than we did 100 years ago. So don't forget that. Um, chemicals and drugs. So I talked about chemicals, but recreational drugs yeah, and alcohol, that will create brain degeneration due to massive inflammation. So we've got to watch these things. These are all damaging our brains. And what's going on with these things that are damaging our brains? We're Again, we're prematurely degenerating our brains and our brains are, are shutting down earlier in life than what they should. High rates of Alzheimer's and dementia. The brain is not designed to shut down before our body shut down. The brain is the final frontier. We were built, our bodies were designed much better than that. So don't accept memory problems. And another one, and this is a, this is a dark one, pharmaceuticals. I'll tell you, pharmaceuticals are there's so many pharmaceuticals on the market that are responsible for neuroinflammation. Statins, cholesterol medication, is high on the list. In fact, it's one of its most common symptoms is memory impairment. If you are on a statin or a family or somebody you know that's on a cholesterol medication and suddenly they have brain problems, get them to, t I'm, don't go off your medication just because of this video, get them to their doctor, go to the doctor and talk to the doctor, say the problem, there's other drugs that can be used and make sure that you're not having neurological symptoms because this is serious stuff. Um, so the, the point of this video is to cut down your brain inflammation. Those warning signs, they can't exist. You have gotta get rid of them. And if you get rid of, if you catch them early enough, you can get rid of all those symptoms. I see people in my office every day with neuroinflammation due to many reasons and then they can't function in life. They leave their jobs uh, earlier, they, they drop out of their jobs earlier than they should. They were trying to retire earlier, they have to change careers. This is, this is all doesn't have to happen. And if you catch it early, you can reverse it. So um, we have to preserve our brains. Don't fall into statistics of, of getting into that premature brain degeneration of Alzheimer's and dementia, because those rates are actually skyrocketing right now due to chronic brain inflammation at a younger age, so we gotta minimize it. So, I know that's a lot, and I could talk about this for a long time, but if you have any questions about this, you can always put a comment. You need help with this, we can work with anybody in the country. Well, I shouldn't say anybody in the continent. I have even people out of the continent. So, by all means, reach out to us, we can help, and you can turn this around, preserve that brain, because it is everything. So, I hope that was helpful. Um, with that being said, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison, and I look forward to talking to you next day, where we're gonna answer the why to another health-related question. Have a great day.